How the Irish and Scots became Indians, colonial traders and agents of the southeastern tribes. But James, that's below the Mason-Dixon line. You can't be doing stuff like this because that's where all the baddies are. All the racists are down there. Don't you understand? There's no way. You can't be talking about this. James, stop. Stop. Why would racists be joining the Muscogee? Why? And the answer, according to James Dune, is Scots and Irish traders and agents who often wrote about their experiences were prominent among the Europeans who settled among the southeastern Indians in the 18th century, particularly among the Cherokees, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, and Seminole, collectively known as the Five Civilized Nations. Their was known to be five civilized nations in the late 1700s. We understood this, that here on this land, there were five civilized nations. Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, which is really Muskogee, and Seminole. That this land was saturated, and just as you know, in Virginia, the Powhatan, had a city that was larger than London, that when you uh, head to a new world, you notice this is not a new world. This is a very old world. This world is older than London. Oh my gosh, this place is amazing. And the history gets written after you. After you. Exact same way exact same way you're watching the corona event being smeared into history now exact same way exact same process look at these men closely on the right because they're all Muscogee Indians And when you look at him, isn't that odd? Because you don't see that at all. What you see is an amalgamation of what the Hopi called the four colors, the four clays. And that the four clays had come together under the Muscogee Indian nation. And that the very Hopi prophecy was being fulfilled before we came up with this Mason-Dixon line. In southern Alabama, the most racist place in the world, this dude was wandering around. And he was traveling as far north as the Great Lakes to trade with the Iroquois. That a man from the five civilized nations of the South was heading all the way north and trading with one of the most ancient civilized nations in the North. And these people were fully integrated. That they were adopting the colors, the patterns, and the fashion of the Scotch and the Irish and everyone else around them. Why? Because that's what people do. People integrate. Do you know how many stories? Oh my God, it's amazing. Uh, trepidations of Indian encounters of the West. I don't. I have that book somewhere. I've been. I've been reading it. It's really great. And there are all these stories of uh, a white settler being taken captive by the Indians, and that. White settlers like a little boy or a little girl. Uh, a year or two later, um, that boy or girl is quote unquote rescued and enters into a deep depression, <laughs> will not eat, uh, is incapable of adapting to uh, settler, white settler society, and wants to go back. Wants to go back to 
the Indian Reservation, and vice versa. Got the same stories of a very famous uh, Indian princess. Uh, I'm not talking about Pokewani. We can definitely talk about her, but but uh, a, a very famous Indian princess, I believe is actually Comanche, that, that came into uh, something happened and ended up in, in settler uh, civilization. A year or two later, uh, to appease and create peace, uh, she is sent back and uh, completely disrespects the tribe because she's terrified and afraid and doesn't want to go. And that she, uh, uh, the it gets so heated that the Indians are like, well, we're not going to take her. Uh, that's fucked up. We don't want her. <laughs> and uh, uh, there's finally some talk to ensue and they basically have to force her to go, to force her to do it. Uh, these stories are prevalent, and, and and each side will argue. See, our society's better because when we kidnapped one of their kids, he totally didn't want to leave. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's what the uh, Iraqi war veterans tell me when I tell them, uh, hey, maybe uh, maybe you were doing something fucked up. And they're like, no, because we were there. This little kid came up to me and was like, hey, man, high five, Joe. And now I, I know what we're doing was good. It's the exact same thing. Humans regulate with each other, which is great. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Right? This was competition. This was competition. And that's why at Appomattox Courthouse, during the signing of the treaty, ending the Civil War, we didn't suddenly fix racism. We didn't suddenly fix, oh, because the whites hate the blacks and now they have to like. And in the treaty, it didn't say, all right, so all you white guys are going to apologize to all the black guys. Because Boston, during that whole time, was saturated with penny ads saying, I lost a, a white girl. If you find her, don't feed her. Don't you feed her. I'll give you a penny if you don't feed her. Remember, I put her under a spell that she belongs to a sheet of paper. You, you help my spell. You keep my spell going. And I'm going to feel great because we liberated the black people. It's all, excuse me, it's bullshit, people. It was bullshit. Why do you think this sick fuck burned the South? Look at where he went. This guy was destroying any kind of old world of the five civilizations. The main routes of travel to allow the five civilizations to continue trading are in blue. Except for, no, that's actually where Sherman decided that this is where we need to go to put down the slave owners. The slave owners. And do you understand that maybe 2%, maybe 2% of the South even owned slaves, and if they did, where would they be? They'd be in the plantations. They'd be in the flatlands. Remember, the Indians told the white guys, stop planting so much tobacco, you dumbasses. Stop. I know it's good shit, but stop planting so much of it. You're not going to make it here. Those are the flatlands. They were destroying the five civilized nations. That's what they were doing. They were destroying the Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Chickasaw, the Creek, and the Seminole. That's what this was for. And they needed the sickest fuck they could find to do it. And where that army had been brewing for five years, for three years prior to the Civil War, that army was brewing, brewing with hatred. All those marches through New York were a buildup to this slaughter. The whole army is burning with an insatiable desire to wreak violence upon South Carolina. I almost tremble for her fate. Now you tell me that's because they, they enslave black people. And that's why we're going we're gonna to leave our white indentured server contracts, servitude contracts in our vault. And we're going to go down there and we're going to burn them. Because they're doing that with black people. 
You can't do that with black people. You're only supposed to do that with white people. And it has to be under, above ground. You can't be doing that underground. It's all bullshit. And this is psychopath. This is psychopathy. <laughs>